You ever seen one of these things before? Well, this is a positron emission tomography machine, or a PET machine, and it relies on medical isotopes in order to function. But before we get into medical isotopes, I want to first address a question that you're probably asking, and that is, what is an isotope? An isotope is really just a different version of a particular element, and that is, we base this version on the mass number of that particular element. Now, in order to understand mass number, we have to take a look back at the structure of an atom. So within the nucleus, we know that there are protons and neutrons, and the atomic number equates to the number of protons that we have. In fact, the atomic number defines the element that we're using. If we take a look at the combination of protons and neutrons, which we classify as nucleons, those particles that are located in the nucleus, these help us arrive at the mass number. So the total number of protons and neutrons, that is the total number of nucleons, gives rise to the mass number. So if the atomic number can't change, that is, it's not going to dictate the version of a particular particle or isotope that we have, it must be this mass number that helps us do that. So we have ways of representing this, and the first way is through something that we call an isotope symbol. And the isotope symbol contains the mass number and atomic number of that particular particle. So for example, if we're looking at oxygen, if we want to represent oxygen's atomic number, that's going to be equal to the number of protons in the nucleus. And since oxygen's atomic number of eight, that tells us that we have eight protons in the nucleus, and we represent oxygen with a number eight beside it. If we're taking a look at the total number of nucleons, we have eight protons and eight neutrons in the most common version or isotope of oxygen, so that gives us a total mass number of 16. And so you can see here that this is our representation or our isotope symbol of oxygen. We also have another way of representing a particular isotope, and that is by taking the name or symbol and putting the mass number at the end. So for example, the most common version of oxygen is oxygen 16, and we can put that 16, that mass number, that total number of nucleons, at the end. Now we do have other versions of oxygen, one of which has nine neutrons in the nucleus, and so its total number of nucleons is 17. So we refer to this particular isotope of oxygen as oxygen 17. So these are different versions of these particular isotopes. Now before we get to medical isotopes and their importance and what they're used for, we have to take a look at a very particular class of isotopes that we refer to as radioisotopes. And they're radioisotopes because they're radioactive. They break down over a certain period of time to produce radiation in the process. Now the time at which they break down we refer to as a half-life. The half-life helps us determine how long these isotopes are going to stick around. Because the half-life is the amount of time that it takes for half of a radioactive isotope to break down. The longer the half-life, the longer it's going to stick around. Now the most common version of a radioisotope that you're likely to know is carbon-14. Carbon-14 is used in carbon dating. Yeah, that's right, to figure out how long something that was living once has been dead, so that it can be used to date these particular types of substances. So back to our PET scan machine. Well, what a PET scan does is it produces an image, and the reason that it produces an image is because these particular isotopes are radioisotopes. So they're consumed as part of a biological molecule, and ultimately enter the body and go through various biological processes, and this radiation that's released can then be monitored and interpreted by the machine, and an image is produced. And it allows doctors and technicians to take a look at these images and see what happens during these biological processes, to see if there are areas where, say, cancer is occurring or has metastasized or moved along because these are typically areas that use up a lot of energy. So that if we're consuming a biological molecule like glucose and there's an excess of glucose use within the body, it's very possible that we are going to have a location or area of the body or a particular process within the body that could lead to an indication that this area is potentially cancerous. So hopefully you're getting the idea that isotopes just aren't a chemistry term. They do have relevance for us, especially those individuals who are potentially ill. And for those of us who have close friends and family that are ill, these are very important indeed to help us identify problems quickly and swiftly so that they can be dealt with. Thanks for watching.